despite the fact that much of our secular world has now moved forward from Christmas, we recognize that as followers and disciples of Jesus, that we have not moved on from Christmas. Not only do our decorations remind us of this sacred season, but moreover, we recognize that the church celebrates what we call the octave of Christmas. For eight days beginning on December 25th to January 1st, the church treats each of these days as if it were still Christmas Day. So great and marvelous is the miracle and the gift of Christmas that the church recognizes that it cannot be celebrated, comprehended, and live in one mere day, but gives to us eight days to be able to rejoice in the newness of life that Christ's birth has brought to the world long ago and still today. And therefore, each of these days during the octave of Christmas, we are invited to welcome and to make more room in our hearts and our lives to be able to welcome Emmanuel, God with us. And so as we gather this evening, we continue to rejoice in Emmanuel, God with us, and we continue to welcome the Prince of Peace and the true light of the world. As we gather in the midst of this octave of Christmas, the last Sunday of our current year, the Church always invites us to turn our gaze to reflect upon the gift of the Holy Family and the life that Mary, Jesus, and Joseph spent together in those years of his early formation and life. And as our opening prayer reminded us, the Holy Family provides to us a shining example of how it is that we are to live the virtues of family life and how it is that we are to grow in the bond of charity, of service. And certainly we know that the Holy Family lived this call in a very particular and a very genuine way that helped be able to assist them in being faithful to God's call in their lives and to be able to help their son to be able to grow in the practice of the faith so that he would be able to take on his responsibility, his public ministry, some 30 years after his birth. And so this evening, as we celebrate this Feast of the Holy Family, we look to Mary, Jesus, and Joseph as a model and a guide of how it is that we are to live our own individual lives and how we are to live our family lives. And the scripture readings that the Church provides to us this evening gives to us a reminder of some of those qualities and characteristics that we are called to live and embrace in our lives. The overarching theme of all of our readings this Sunday reminds us of the virtue and the gift of faithfulness. We hear first and foremost of the faithfulness of God to his promises long ago, and we hear of the call of individuals to be faithful to their responsibilities in life, living in that great obedience of faith. Certainly, we hear of God's faithfulness to Abraham and Sarah in promising that they would not only have a child of their own, but that Abraham would become the father of many nations. We hear of that same faithfulness of Yahweh God to the promises that he made long ago to Mary and to Joseph, that they would conceive and to bear a son, and he would be Emmanuel. We hear of the faithfulness of God to Simeon and Anna in the temple, that they would not see death before they had seen the Messiah. And so over and over again throughout the scriptures, we are reminded of the faithfulness of God, that when God makes a promise to his people, when God makes a promise to us, God is always faithful to that promise, that what God says, God does. And we can always count on the Lord in being faithful to what he says that he is going to do. But not only do our readings remind us of the faithfulness of God, but they also remind us then of the faithfulness of these individuals. In our first reading from the book of Genesis, we hear the faithfulness of Abraham and Sarah. 
that in their old age and their barrenness, that they are promised by Yahweh God that they will have a son and that that son will be the heir to the throne for Abraham. And we know that Abraham and Sarah believed and trusted in God. And because they believed and trusted in God, what was promised to them came to fruition. In a similar way, we hear about the faithfulness of Mary and Joseph as they consented to God's plan in their lives and in the lives of salvation history, and how because they believed and they trusted that they welcomed Emmanuel not only into their hearts and into their lives, but welcomed him into the world, born in Bethlehem some 2,000 years ago, to teach us how to live and how to love and to save all people. And therefore, the obedience of faith of Joseph and Mary allowed God's plan to come to fruition. And finally, we hear about the faithfulness of Simeon and Anna, both of them devout Jews, both of them who had been promised by Yahweh God that they would not see death before they had set their eyes on the Messiah. And we hear that on that day, that Mary and Joseph brought the child Jesus to the temple to perform the ritual acts of purification, that Simeon was inspired to go to the temple that day. And as he went to the temple, as he set his eyes on this tiny little child, he was inspired and recognized the Messiah in his midst, and he was overwhelmed with a sense of joy in the faithfulness of God to his promise that not only would he send a Messiah into the world to save all people, but that he would be able to set his eyes on the Messiah before facing death. In a similar way, the prophetess Anna also had received that promise, and that day as she was in the temple praying and fasting, as she set her eyes on that child, she too knew the fulfillment of the promise of God made long ago. And not only is she filled with a sense of joy in the midst of being able to see the Messiah, but then she be pro becomes a proclaimer of that good news, telling all in the temple who is in their midst. And so Simeon and Anna, because of their faithfulness in life, receive that gift of being able to set their eyes on the Messiah and to know that God was faithful and true to his promises. And so all of these individuals in our readings this evening not only received promises and assurances by Yahweh God, but they in turn lived out that same faithfulness and fidelity, trusting and believing in God. And because of that, they were richly blessed. Abraham and Sarah with the gift of the Son, Mary and Joseph with the gift of Emmanuel, and Simeon and Anna with seeing the Messiah in their midst. But in spite of the blessings that each of these individuals received, we also know that their faithfulness to Yahweh God did not prevent them from struggles, from suffering, from sacrifice in their life. Each of them went through many and varied hardships during their life. But in the midst of those hardships, they remained faithful. They remained steadfast. They remained trusting in God. They recognized that their faith and their faithfulness in God was not a magical wand that would exempt them from sorrow, from struggle, from suffering, but that their faith would give them the assistance that they needed to continue to soldier on and to continue to remain faithful, trusting in the Lord. Abraham and Sarah had to go through many years of being childless, childless and experiencing the burden of that barrenness, and yet they continued to remain faithful and steadfast. Mary and Joseph had to go undergo many trials and tribulations, not only in welcoming their son, Emmanuel, but then afterwards. And as Simeon prophesied in our gospel, that a sword would even pierce Mary's heart. And yet Joseph and Mary remained steadfast and faithful, 
even in the midst of the struggles. And so too with Simeon and Anna. They too experience difficulties and struggles in the midst of their life. But in the midst of that, they remain steadfast and faithful. And because of the steadfast and faithfulness of each of these individuals, they were richly blessed by the Lord. And so it is too for us that we too have been made promises by our loving God. And we know that God is faithful to his promises, that he is faithful to his covenant forever, as we proclaimed in our psalm this evening. And therefore we know that when God promises to be our God and that we will be his people, that God is true and faithful to his promise, that when Jesus promised that he would be with us always to the end of the age, that he is with us, that when the Holy Spirit was promised to us to be our advocate and our guide, to be with us always, God is faithful to that promise. And therefore, like the people of the scriptures, we too can rejoice in God's faithfulness. And as we rejoice in God's faithfulness, we too then are called to grow in our own obedience of faith, being able to listen to the gentle and loving voice of God, calling us to be his witnesses and his disciples, to be able to announce his kingdom and to build his kingdom in the here and now, so that one day we might enjoy it for all of eternity. And as we grow in our own obedience of faith, we recognize that we too will face trials and tribulations, that our faith does not exempt us from those, but it does reassure us that God is with us in the midst of our joys and our sorrows, in our blessings and in our challenges, and that like Abraham and Sarah, like Mary and Joseph, like Simeon and Anna, we are called to remain steadfast and faithful because the Lord is steadfast and faithful. And so as we celebrate our Eucharist tonight, as we continue to rejoice in the midst of this octave of the Christmas season, continuing to welcome Emmanuel and make more room for him, as we turn to the Holy Family as a model and guide for us to live, we are called then to be able to be faithful in the little and the not-so-little things of life and in our discipleship, so that we can continue to love, to serve the Lord, and in doing so, that we can continue to make His presence known to others, and in doing so, help them to come to know the Lord in their lives.